Hi, my name is Corinne and I am the educator at Fallen Timbers. Today we are going to be talking about animals in the winter. I don't know if you guys have realized, but it has become really cold outside. As you can see behind me, the pond has froze over and the temperature has dropped. I'm really glad that I'm wearing my hat and jacket right now to keep myself warm. This is one way that I am adapting to the cold weather. Adapt means that I am changing myself to make myself comfortable in this new condition. And animals have to do this in the winter too. So animals will do three different things. They will either hibernate, which means go to sleep during the winter. They will migrate, which means go to a different area that is normally warmer. Or they will adapt. And just like I am adapting by wearing my hat and jacket, these animals will adapt by changing themselves to make themselves comfortable in their habitat, which means their home. So today we're going to be talking about these adaptations that these animals have in the winter. I'm going to be pulling out different items from a bin and then we are going to be talking about those items and then I want you to guess out of three animals which animal you think has that adaptation. And then when you see the stop sign on the screen you're going to pause the video and guess once everybody has guessed what animal they think it is, then you can resume the video and I will reveal the answer and then we will move on to the next item in the bin. The first item in the bin are snowshoes. And snowshoes help us to walk on top of the snow. And as you can see, these snowshoes are a lot larger than my foot which helps me to not sink in the snow. Instead, I can walk on top of it. What animal do you think has the same adaptation that has large feet for walking on top of the snow? Do you think that it is a deer, a great horned owl, or a bobcat? The animal that has the adaptation of large feet is the bobcat. As you can see here in the bobcat's track, you can see that its pads are very big so that it does not sink through the snow when it's trying to walk. This also helps them to catch their prey because they will be able to run faster on top of the snow instead of something like a deer that is falling through the snow and has smaller feet. The next item in the bin is a jacket. Like I was saying before, we put on jackets in order to keep ourselves warm. And some animals will also have this adaptation where they will get thicker fur in the winter. So what animal do we think has this adaptation? Do we think that it is a robin, a coyote, or a frog? The second animal was a coyote. And coyotes, just like us putting on a jacket to keep warm, they grow thicker fur in the winter. So as you can see on this coyote, you can see that it has very thick fur and lots of layers to help block the wind and to help it keep warm in the winter time. The next item in the bin is a white jacket. Some of our animals in the winter will actually shed their fur and then they will grow a new coat of white fur. And this white fur helps them to blend in with the snow. What animal do you think has this adaptation? Do you think that it is the snowshoe hare, the red squirrel, or the cardinal? The 
the animal that uses its fur to camouflage or blend into the snow is the snowshoe hare. So here's an example of what their fur looks like. It's very, very white and also very thick and warm so that these animals can survive in the winter. So just like this white jacket is helping me blend into the background behind me, their fur is helping them blend into their surrounding habitat or their home. The next item in the bin is a lunchbox. Just like we use a lunchbox to store food during the day to keep it cold, some animals will store food for the winter so that they have something to eat. One example of food that they might store is pine cones. What animal do you think stores this food? Do you think that it is a white-tailed deer, a brown bear, or a red squirrel? The animal that stores food for the winter is a squirrel and they love to store acorns and also pine cones and sometimes the acorns that they will bury will actually turn into trees. Here is what a squirrel's pelt looks like or fur up close. Another animal that stores away food for the winter is a beaver. If you guys look at the sticks that were from a beaver chewing on them, you can see how there's a pointed edge. So the beavers will actually take these sticks and they will shove them into the ground underneath the water and then that cold water will act like a refrigerator and it will keep the sticks good so that they can eat them throughout the winter, which is really cool. bin is large ears. So some of our animals will use these large ears so that they can hear animals underneath the snow and catch them for food. What animal do you think has large ears like this? Do you think that it is the red fox, the woodchuck, or the skunk? Our last animal is the red fox, and they have really large ears that help them to hear. And as you can see on this red fox behind me, you can see that it has very large ears. The red fox can actually locate its prey underneath the snow. So for example, if it's on top of the snow, it can find a mouse, and once it does, it will head dive into the snow and then grab that mouse. This is really unique for an animal to be able to do because they have to be able to hear really, really good. Thank you for coming outside at Fallen Timbers with me and exploring these different adaptations that animals have during the winter. I hope the next time that you go outside that you look for different animals and see if you can find what kind of different adaptations they have for being outside in the winter.